All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back, or just welcome to the channel. Now, uh, today, I got quite a treat for all the people who are actually interested in this hobby. <laughs> um, today, I'm going to be going over my standard weathering procedure. So, this can really be applied to any tank, but it always depends on the terrain that you're in and all that. But I'll explain more of that later. So this is the uh, finished result. Technically this is the finished tank, I guess. Um, I think it looks great. Yeah. So this is going to be a very compact and unfortunately quite long video. But I think it's going to be very worth it in the end. Uh, it was a very fun and rewarding process, in my opinion. And yeah. And also, I know, I know I said I would only do this, uh, painting this tank in three parts, but it did occur to me that there's, that I completely forgot to mention that there's another step after this, which is adding, uh, making and adding all the equipment and kind of spicing up the tank. So I am going to be doing another video on this tank. But I guess this is it for the painting, technically, so I'll leave it at that. So anyways, yeah, I, uh, I hope you enjoy the video, and uh, yeah. So the first thing that I'm doing here, I have some, uh, I have some uh, burnt sienna, or burnt umber, or some kind of like lightish, or like middle tone brown, whatever you want to use. And I have some white spirit here, here, yeah. Uh, and the first thing we're gonna wanna do is create sort of a filter to go over pretty much the whole model to kind of blend all of the effects together, um, or to blend like the camouflage and all of that. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. Now, if you watch the other videos, uh, you'll remember me saying a lot to try and avoid the paint pooling. Here that's a lot, that's very different. Uh, you can see I'm deliberately trying to allow it to pool and that creates some nice shadows. And you do, especially on those wheels there, you do want to kind of dab over it with a, uh, with a paper towel to remove it on all of the protruding um, surfaces because then, you know, you wouldn't have shadows on those necessarily so yeah just keep that in mind and um, generally this is pretty simple and pretty easy to do you just do it over the whole model um, and it how, how much you apply really depends on how dark you want it or how light you want it you know that kind of stuff Okay, so this next part, um, this is quite a nice part. It adds some uh, some very nice color variation to the model. The previous filter doesn't have to be 100% dry. I mean, it's pretty much dry already, but you know, in the, some of the areas where it pooled, it's not completely dry. So, uh, what you're gonna want to do is you have some of these. Um, you can see some random uh, colors of the oil paints here. We have yellow, white, blue, green and the burnt umber. Um, now, you can use any color you want, really. Uh, you could. It, it really depends on how light you want your, your model to be or how dark you want it to be. And you just dip your brush, uh, a very thin brush, into some of the white spirit and you take um, your first color. Doesn't really matter which. And all you do is you simply go over it, uh, add some dots here and there uh, of the color, and you really um, the the uh, my my advice is to work in small sections at a time because then you can keep your focus a bit better and it's it's a bit easier really, um, to kind of keep track of where you've been and where you have to go. Uh, so you just kind of continue doing that with all of the colors uh, that you want. And 
uh, yeah, so I'll show you guys once I've done that. Okay, so um, now as you can see, I've applied yellow, white, blue, and green uh, oil paints, oil dots on the thing. Don't worry, we're not gonna keep it like this, otherwise it would look horrible. What we are gonna do is we're gonna take our flat brush here, dip it in some white spirit, take most of it off on a paper towel, and then on these uh, sloped uh, surfaces, we're gonna do vertical motions, so up and down. Same goes for um, these that go straight down, these, um, uh, what do you call them? The flat downward surfaces. Um, Sorry, it's kind of early in the morning right now. Uh, and then on these flat, um, on these flat surfaces here, we're gonna do more kind of stippling motions. Uh, yeah, and the idea is to take away most of the color. It's gonna be a very, very subtle effect, but it's gonna be quite nice. Okay, right off the bat, I'm just gonna say. Um, be careful with the blue and green. As you can see, for, for me, it was super overpowering and I had to use a paper towel to dab some of it away. So either do that or just do less of the blue-green colors. It really doesn't matter, um, just as long as you remove most of the color. While I am here, I also do want to mention, uh, because this video is so compact, if there are any techniques you guys want me to go over in future videos in much more depth, Make sure to just kind of tell me in the comments or um, let me know personally if you if you do know me personally, and uh, I'd be happy to do that. Um, you know, more video ideas. Let's go. So yeah. Okay, so here we are. Um, <clears throat> the uh, oil dot filter has pretty much dried. Uh, uh, I've done it everywhere except for pretty much the lower hull. I didn't focus uh, too much there. Now what we're going to want to do is I have a sort of um, oil wash uh, put up similar to the um, similar to the sort of filter that we did in the first uh, in the first step, except this one is a bit more opaque. Uh, you're going to want to get a very small brush and go over all of the creases and all the small details. This really makes everything pop, and especially if you did, uh, if you made like your own weld seams or something like that, uh, you'll really love this step because it brings out all of those small details. Fortunately, I did not do that, but nonetheless, I think it'll be uh, a great step. And um, yeah, so I'll just get to that. So again, there's no real uh, science to any of this, really. Um, you just... You, you kind of want to focus it more in the areas of the of the cracks and crevices and just all of the details, you know, rivets as well. But, you know, if you if you wanted generally your, your model to be much darker, you could also apply it similar to what we did with the filter in the first step. Um, just be aware that it will it will get dark very fast but then again that's that's an advantage of oil paints is that it takes a long time to dry so you still have a lot of working time with it if you're not quite happy and um, but one of the disadvantages though is that this is going to take ages to dry so if you are happy with it I would let it dry for at least 48 ish hours um, yeah it, that should be definitely good enough. So through the magic of editing, we are now uh, two days further. It is now uh, Tuesday. I filmed on uh, on Sunday. So this next part uh, is kind of an interesting part and it's nice but only if it's done well um, and this is we're gonna we're gonna be enhancing some of the chips that we did uh, in the last video or videos um, we're gonna be enhancing some of the hairspray chips by coming in and filling it using the hairspray chips as a sort of guideline to put in some 
uh, steel chips. So I have sort of like a dark steel color right here, uh, which I believe is, um, yeah, it's light gray mixed with a few drops of black. Very simple. Um, yeah, so I'll just show you guys how I do that. Now this part, not gonna lie, um, probably one of the most annoying parts or er, steps rather of the of the whole weathering process. At least in my opinion, it is because it's such a um, it, it's really a step that requires like a hundred percent of your attention. Because usually I use I, I like to um, listen to a podcast or watch a movie or whatever while I'm. Uh, while I'm working on my models, but you really can't do that with this because you need you need your full attention and it's hard to keep that focus for Sometimes hours at a time if I remember correctly this took me about an evening to complete um, So probably around like four hours or so um, What I like to think of though is while I'm doing it I like to think of each different plate armor plate as being its own model, so treat it with your full respect and attention. Obviously, it cannot sense retent er, attention because it's plastic, but you know, still. And here for um, some of the finer, even finer tips, you know, you can also do, as you can see that I'm doing here, is use a shish kebab stick. I remember I even sharpened this one a little bit uh, with my hobby knife. So it would probably be even better to use a toothpick, but I didn't have one. Um, this just, it's, it's a bit finer than the brush. I'd, I don't have that many small brushes, you know, I've never been good at working with small brushes. Um, so this, this, this works quite well and it also holds a lot less paint. So it's quite, it, it's a lot harder to mess up and overdo it. And here, moving on to the rust stages, what you can see is I kind of made my own little rust mi mixture um, out of oil paints and dipped my sponge in there and sort of, it is, it's sort of like the sponge chipping technique, but you really, you want, you really want this to be a light effect, a very subtle effect, and you do barely notice it in the end if you do it well. So really make sure and take almost all of the paint off of your sponge, otherwise it can severely mess it up. So now this next step that we're going to do, um, also quite a fun step, is you can see I've mixed up sort of a rust color here. It doesn't, how, how, lighter, how light it is or how dark it is doesn't make a massive, massive difference. But <clears throat> basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab like a shish kebab stick or a toothpick I'm going to put a little bit of the uh, oil paint on there. By the way, this is a mix of uh, burnt sienna right here. Um, and just red and yellow. Yeah, very simple. Um, and you can mix that in whatever ratio you want, depending on how light you want it to be. And then, uh, with not too much paint on there, you're going to go over some of these uh, larger chips here and just kind of put a little bit of the little bit of the paint there in random random spots uh, obviously staying within the uh, staying within the chips that we made previously and okay this is a good this is a good starting point here this small section and then what you want to do is uh, get a, it doesn't have to be too small actually, uh, but get a, not a massive brush, right? And put some white spirit on your palette. Wow, that was way too much white spirit. I don't know if y'all saw that. <laughs> Oops. Um, <laughs> God. Uh, wait, I'll be right back. I'm going to clean this up. Okay, I'm back and I cleaned it up a little bit. Sorry for that little spill, that was weird. Um, okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is uh, dip your brush in some of the white spirit. Uh, you don't need too much on your brush. 
and really we're just going to blend it. And for uh, similar to the oil dot technique, the oil dot filter thing, uh, for these sloped surfaces we're going to be doing vertical motions, for the flat surfaces we're going to be stippling more, and yeah, you get it. So, sort of just, it's sort of like a, um, like a rust filter, almost. And sort of some, some streaking effects. And kind of let it accumulate in some of the areas where it naturally would accumulate. And, uh, you know, kind of tap on it with your finger if you want. Uh, although do smooth that out afterwards, otherwise you get fingerprints. Um, yeah, and you just continue doing this a little bit. And it should look very nice in the end. So, yeah, I guess I'll show you guys in the time lapse. So I find personally that I uh, that I explained it quite well in the last little clip, so there's not too much explaining to do there. Um, but one thing that I do want to mention, uh, one little mistake that I made, not only in this step, but throughout the whole weathering process of this model, um, I didn't seal, I, I only sealed all of the effects one time, almost completely at the end, almost all the way at the end, uh, with a with a varnish. I would recommend that you do that you seal it after every after every like oil step or every other uh, oil stage maybe because it's um, what I did notice is that as we went along adding more oil effects which of course you need white spirit to use the previous effects got a lot more subtle and a lot of the a lot of the hard work that we had put in uh, that I had put in sorry. Um, was being lost, and yeah, it kind of sucked, but oh well. And now here you can see as I move along to these uh, to, the, to the side armor, uh, you can see I'm actually using a piece of wire, steel wire, to apply the paint. You can also use a pin or, you know, even a toothpick. But I find, um, you know, the shish kebab stick was already, I was already trying to get some some precision with that, but I, th I feel like this was even better, you know, it, again, it doesn't hold that much paint, so it might take a little longer, but, um, you do have the added advantage that is very precise, and, uh, you don't mess up. Okay, so now you can see, uh, we finished the sort of rust filter stage. I think it's looking very nice. Um, now the next part, uh, that we're gonna do, uh, which involves mainly acrylic paints actually. So we're going to be painting the exhaust here and the impact craters. Um, yeah, this is, it's pretty self-explanatory to be honest. Uh, yeah, so most of this is going to be built up using rust tones. So obviously you're going to need some red uh, right here. Uh, some yellow, uh, medium yellow here, and some, some yellow ochre, and just some black and white to darken it down or lighten it up, depending on how much, uh, depending on what sort of effects you want to, you want to read. So I'm going to go on to the time lapse, show you guys how I do that, and explain it in the process. Wow, sorry, I don't know why this is, yeah, okay. So you can see, um... The, the ratios with paint, I, I didn't really pay attention to those, it was just to my liking, you know. I did mix it in with some of my own pigments, which weren't actually pigments, it was just sort of ground up sand. Um, but that does allow us to build up some texture. So you can see I'm starting out with some lighter tones, and then eventually I build some darker tones over that with the, with the sponge. Um, yeah, there's I'm sure there's better videos out there explaining this, but... Yeah, again, I'll, maybe I'll explain it a bit better in a future video. Now onto these uh, impact craters. You can see, again, building up um, building up rust tones. And for the crater itself, I actually ended up building it mainly up from, uh, from oil paints, just so that I could get some streaking effects. And I couldn't get a, a clip of it, unfortunately, but 
later on I also went around on the side and created some steel chips to sort of simulate simulate some of the some of the hot metal that it like spread around. Oh yeah, you can see it here. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, so now that we've um, now that we've done all the rust stages and uh, all of that, now we can move on to uh, quite a nice step, which is uh, sort of like old grease that would um, build up, I guess. Um, and later on, we're gonna add more grease, um, but that's gonna be fresh and more wet. This, uh, what we're about to do now. We want to have it more as sort of um, a blending stage and to make it look more three-dimensional, which I think should be quite nice. So all I have here is some black uh, oil paint mixed with a little bit of turpentine, or er, white spirit, sorry. And I'm going to take a pinch of my pigment and put it in there. This uh, adds a little bit of texture. Not that grease has a ton of texture, but this is going to be sort of like grease mixed with dirt and grime and all of that. So you really just want to mix it in and it gives you sort of this nice brown black color, which is really what we're looking for. And you can always darken it down with more black or you lighten it up by adding more pigments or adding more, or adding period, um, adding brown paint. So then, we sort of go around the, around the edges, and you don't need to be too careful with it, don't worry. Oh, this is out of frame for you guys, oops, sorry. So, you just sort of, um, put it around the edges of the, uh, of the engine and later on we're also going to be doing it around areas where the crew would grease places up like uh, doors and stuff like that. Okay this is good to start out with, wait no actually it's not, let me put some more on the engine or on the this thingy again early in the morning, I can't think straight. Actually no, I don't know if it's early in the morning. I don't I have no clue what time it is. Okay, eleven twenty two, not that bad. Okay, so <clears throat> now that we've got like our sort of base base coat there, we're gonna grab some white spirit, put a little bit on our brush, and sort of blend it out. And of course because it's a flat surface, we're going to be blending it in uh, stippling motions. This gets rid of a lot of the color, I know, but it blends it very nicely. And you can always build it up in layers, you know. And yeah. So that's, that's quite nice. Um, wait, I'm just gonna push some of this over to the edge. The nice thing about oil paints is that, I mean, obviously it sucks because you have to wait ages for it to dry, but it's also great because, y you know, you can work with it for a while. So that's great. So yeah, this is, this is it really. Okay, now in this clip, you can see I'm sort of starting the the mud and dirt uh, effects. And what I'm doing here is using a mixture similar to the to the old grease stains that we just did. And I'm just uh, sort of streaking them down on the lower hull. I tried to get some, I tried to make it so that they were sort of like mud effects, but it didn't really work so generally it just darkened down the lower hull which isn't necessarily a bad thing because most of it was going to be covered in mud anyways but yeah but I did apply this effect on some of the other uh, sloped and like downward surfaces uh, in the end it just to build up some of the some of the grime effects and it wasn't that bad it was in the end it was it was a decent effect 
but maybe use a bit less on the lower hull just so that you can actually get streaking effects which you know is a bit nicer you can see i'm just doing the same thing on the other side here um yeah you know i'm thinking maybe next time um because in the last video uh in the last part i added all the wheels but next time i think i might keep the wheels off uh even before i um yeah, even, even before I start doing all the, or no, even during <laughs> doing the, all the, all the weathering processes. Um, yeah, I think maybe that just might be smarter so that I can reach some areas in the lower hull better. So yeah, here you can see, again, I'm just adding some of the grime effects um, a bit more. I'm doing it a, a bit lighter than I did it on the, on the engine deck, or engine plate, I don't, I don't know. But still. Now here, finally starting some of the, uh, or pre pretty much the fun, the most fun uh, part in my opinion, adding uh, some mud texture. So you can see I have a very dark brown mud. Um, I believe it was mainly burnt umber. I can't remember the ratio exactly, but it's really, it's really to taste. Um, although my diorama is actually in sort of a semi-arid climate, um, you know, Western Russia in the, in the summer, which, you know, yeah. Um, so this is more sort of wet mud that would be underneath the dry mud that we're going to do in a second, but it's mainly just to build up the texture. So do stippling motions, you know, all that. And then when it comes to all the dry mud, uh, as you can see, I'm sort of doing some flicking techniques. With the uh, with the paintbrush and the and a shish kebab stick, this uh, also built up the texture, but you know builds up the color quite nicely as well uh, as it would splash. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. And you can see I'm just sort of blending it together a little bit with stippling motions, but uh, be patient if I were you. I think I was a little impatient, wanting to get the model finished and done with. Um, so I was kind of rushing it a little bit, but try and keep your patience. You know, you're almost there, you're almost finished. <laughs> and then here um, with the side armor, you can see I'm starting out building the, building the texture, first of all, with, with, uh, with the sponge. And then later on I come in and I use the, the flicking techniques. I recommend when, especially when doing the side armor, um, you th thin your mixture down a little bit more so that it's, uh, yeah, so that it flows, so that it's fine speckles, I guess. And here, adding some, some of my pigments, um, just to blend the mud together. And later on, we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be sealing this with a matte acrylic varnish. So, yeah. Right on, so, now that the uh, acrylic, or not acrylic, the, the matte varnish has dried, it seals everything nicely, it seals all the pigments nicely, it's uh, yeah, it's just all very nice. So now, uh, one of the last steps, we're almost getting there, um, you can see uh, some of the reminiscence of our old grease stains that we did back here, those were sort of the dried grease stains. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to be going back with some fresh grease and adding it very very gently very lightly um yeah that just it simulates dry or er, fresh grease it's pretty simple like grease and oil so how i made it here you can see it sort of this stuff um it is one yeah one part black just straight up black to seven parts of this by the way acrylic color um, but to seven parts of this stuff which is eh, yeah Vallejo's water texture also acrylic and you just mix it up you don't it doesn't have to be a perfect mix and I like to apply it with a shish kebab stick just because uh, it allows me to have a little more control, and because the shish kebab sticks also holds a bit less, 
it's much harder to overdo it, if you know what I mean. So, we go all of the areas where the crew would grease it up. And, again, we need to be very light with it. It's, especially if you're doing it with a brush, it can be very easy to overdo it. And I, you can be more heavy handed here on the, uh, here on the exhaust thingy. I don't, I don't really know what this is called. I should really study my tanks more before I paint them. I know how a tank works, it's just, I don't know the individual names and stuff like that. And then, go in here with a sponge and kind of clean it up a little bit. And, uh, yeah, you just do that in a few areas, and it looks the same when it's dry as that it is wet, so it's quite a nice effect. Um, give some nice wet effects and if you're in a if your tank is in a rainy environment you can do the same thing just with the just with the what energy with the water texture and that's just it it's just like rain honestly so yeah i'm gonna finish this uh most of it is gonna be concentrated on the doors the hatches and of course the engine uh, the engine plates and then yeah, we'll move on to the two last steps. Now, finally, the last step, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. I know a lot of people, uh, well, a lot of people is a strong word because I think probably one, maybe two people have watched actually all the way to the end of this video. And if you have, Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, so last step, soft pencil. Very, 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 very soft pencil. I have an HB pencil, I believe this is. Um, just the softest pencil you have. This is the softest I have. And what you wanna do is, among all her, on all of the edges, you just want to lightly go over it with the pencil. This adds a nice metallic look to it, and I find that it really it really increases the uh, the I don't I don't even know if this is a word, but like the believability. Uh, that it's an actual metal structure and not made of plastic. Uh, it doesn't really matter if there's chips or not. These are like, I guess this is creating super fine chips. But yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish that really. And it's super simple, just on all of the exposed edges. That's all really. So yeah. Okay, finally, we're finished. Sort of. Um, yeah, uh, personally, I'm pretty happy with it. I, <laughs> it's, um, uh, I haven't really in the past ever produced weathering techniques like this or painting techniques. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, and I think maybe, maybe this even marks my, my transition from beginner into semi experience. I don't know. I don't know. But in any case, it was really fun to build most of the time uh, and there were some issues here and there I, I did make some mistakes but overall I'm pretty happy with the result and next again I'm sorry I know I said that I would do this in three parts but I am gonna be making another video about finishing this and it's gonna be sort of about um, making equipment, painting the equipment, putting it on the tank, uh, just different ways that you can sort of spice up your tank and make it really unique. Uh, I think either way, this is already pretty unique, um, but similar to what I said in the last video, it can be even better. 
So that's where we're going to be working on in the next video, which should be out pretty soon as well. So yeah, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video and yeah, have a nice day. Farewell.